problem is taking a look at uh, of sound. And so the idea of intensity, I, is that it's basically a measure of how power, P, is spread out uniformly over the surface area of a sphere. And basically that says if you have a point source of sound and it's spreading out in all directions, we know that energy is conserved. So the power at all points is going to be the same, but the, the way it's spread out over the surface area of a sphere is uh, is decreasing. So it gets more spread out as you get further away from the sound source. So here you have a, uh, we have a jet plane that's taking off with a power, I'm sorry, actually with an intensity of 10 watts per meter squared. And uh, it's 30 meters away. And I'm actually just gonna call this R1 and I1 for reasons that will become clear. So we prefer that uh, we want to buy a house, but we don't want it to be too close to the jet, wherever the jets take off, because we prefer our intensity to be no greater than one microwatt per meter squared. So we want to know how far do we have to move away for that to be the case. So let's figure out uh, how we can manipulate these equations. So if I look at I1 over I2, then that's P over four pi, uh, P over four pi R1 squared, divided by P over four pi R2 squared. And the power isn't changing, it's just dissipating. The four pi's cancel. And then this, you uh, you flip the denominators here, and that's going to be R2 squared over R1 squared. So now we have a relationship between uh, the ratio of the intensities and the ratio of the radii, which is what we're looking for. And that tells us that R2 is going to be equal to R1 times the square root of I1 over I2, which is 30 meters times the square root of 10 watts per meter squared over 10 to the minus six watts per meter squared, because that's a microwatt. And that's gonna be 95 kilometers. So now, let's see, that was part A. Part B of the question says, you have a friend uh, and she decides to move twice as far away from wherever this jet is taking off as you. And we wanna know um, what intensity she experiences. So for R3 is equal to twice R2, what is, I, or what is I3? So the way we're gonna do this is use this same relationship. We're gonna say I2 over I3 is equal to R3 cubed over R2 squared. <laughs> Not R3 cubed, I'm sorry, R3 squared over R2 squared. And that tells us the I3, if we just simplify the algebra, is I2 times R2 squared or over R3 squared. But we can simplify this because we can plug in this over here for R3. It's I2 times R2 over 2R2 squared. You know, these R2s cancel. And this is just equal to one fourth times I two. So the final answer is that the intensity decreases by a factor, decreases actually by a factor of four. So uh, overall, actually the final answer, if we want to plug in numbers is 0 0.25 microwatts per meter squared. Great. Uh, finally, we want to know what uh, what is the power that the jet produces at takeoff. So we want to find P for part C. So we just know uh, that I is P over 4 pi R squared. So we'll say that P is equal to 4 pi R squared times I. And we know the intensity in the, uh, we know the intensity is 10 watts per meter squared when R is 30 meters. So we'll just plug in those numbers here.
and we get a final numerical answer of 1.1 times 10 to the 5 watts. And that's our final answer.